Good day, and welcome to the Crystals and Beyond podcast. Let's drop in on the current discussions of Aaron and Irene and see where they have been poking around in the worlds of crystals, herbs, astrology, divination, and beyond. We join them in progress. Hey there, Crystal Curious. Ever feel like um, you're swimming in a sea of like amethyst and rose quartz, but not quite sure what it all means? Yeah. That's where this deep dive comes in. Right. We're cracking open the basic crystal users course to give you a crystal clear understanding of these fascinating stones. You know, it's like that saying, a diamond is just a piece of coal that did well under pressure. Mm -hmm. This ebook really helps us separate the true gems of knowledge from the, shall we say, right. rough stones of marketing hype. Love that. And speaking of rough stones versus gems, the ebook starts by breaking down the difference between crystals, minerals, rocks, yeah. all those terms that get thrown around. Yeah. It's surprisingly easy to get them mixed up. It really is. The, the ebook helped me realize I've been calling some rocks crystals when they're about as crystalline as my grandma's sugar bowl. Right. They might be pretty, but they're not technically crystals unless they have that specific structure, you know, like clear quartz or a pyrite cube. Right. It's all about the way the atoms line up. Yeah. Kind of like how a perfectly organized spice rack is way more satisfying than a jumbled mess. Exactly. And that's where Mindit.org comes in handy. Oh. The resource the ebook recommends. It's like a fact checking website for crystals. So you can see if that mystic moonstone is the real deal or just a clever name for well, a regular old rock. So it's like how some people try to sell those rare Himalayan salt lamps when it's just, you know, salt. Precisely. And the ebook even talks about this guy who tried to sell rocks from his backyard as boulderite. Oh, wow. Anyone can slap a fancy name on something, so it pays to do your research. Okay, so we've got our crystal decoder rings on now. Okay. But what about actually buying these things? I've walked into crystal shops and felt totally overwhelmed. Oh, absolutely. It's like the Wild West in there sometimes. The ebook actually compares it to a Wild West saloon where you're not quite sure who to trust or what you're paying for. Yeah. Unlike diamonds, which have the four C's to guide you, the crystal market is a bit more uh, free spirited. So we've talked about separating the fool's gold from the real gems in the crystal marketplace. Right. But what about this whole thing about cleansing crystals? Yeah. It seems like everyone's got a different method. Right. It's definitely one of those topics where opinions, shall we say, crystallize along different lines. Right. The ebook dives into a variety of techniques, many of them involving the elements. Oh, like earth, air, fire, water. Oh, right. Kind of like a crystal spa day. Exactly. The ebook talks about how running water, especially from natural sources like streams, can help clear away stagnant energy. Okay. They say it's like hitting the reset button on your crystal. Makes sense. I always feel more refreshed after a dip in the ocean or a walk by a waterfall. Right. Maybe it's the same for crystals. That's the idea. And for a gentler approach, the ebook mentions burying crystals in the earth. Hmm. Something about that direct contact with the earth's energy being super grounding. I can see that. It's like when you walk barefoot on the grass mm -hmm. and just feel that sense of calm. Exactly. And then there's smudging with herbs like sage or palo santo. It's a practice that's been used for centuries to clear negative energy. I've definitely smudged my fair share of sage, especially after a stressful day. Right. That smoky scent is so grounding. Right. It's like cleansing your space with good vibes. Yeah. And the ebook suggests doing the same for your crystals, letting the smoke waft over them to clear away any lingering energy. Okay. So we've cleansed our crystals. Now for the fun part, actually using them. Right. I'm particularly drawn to that idea from the ebook about connecting with angels through crystals. Ah, yes, the angelic realm. This is where those color associations we touched on earlier come into play. Okay. Remember how we talked about turquoise being linked to renewal? Yes. Like that fresh energy of spring. Like a crystal reboot? Well, the ebook says that turquoise energy can also help us break free from old habits. Interesting. It even suggests connecting with the angel Yebamaya, who's all about breaking chains and supporting positive transformation. Oh, wow. Using yellow crystals like citrine or yellow jasper. Interesting. So it's like those colors amplify our intention mm. and help us tap into a specific energy we're looking for. Exactly. It's about working with the energy of the crystals, not just expecting them to wave a magic wand. Makes sense. Excellent. Now, what about the practical stuff? Sure. The ebook also talked about feng shui and using crystals to harmonize our living spaces. That really caught my attention. Ah, uh, feng shui. 
It's all about creating a harmonious flow of energy in your surroundings. Right. The ebook explains how crystals can amplify those energies. Okay. For example, it suggests placing fire element crystals. Think fiery colors like red, orange, or purple in the south area of your home, which is thought to boost passion and recognition. Ooh, like a little crystal fireplace to ignite my creativity. Exactly. Or if you're feeling ungrounded, the ebook suggests bringing in some earth element crystals like yellows, browns, oranges, and placing them in the center of your home, which is associated with stability and nourishment. Okay. I'm already picturing a cozy corner with some earthy crystals and maybe a comfy blanket. See? You're a natural at this. Okay. The ebook also talks about using crystals in grids, which are basically like crystal power arrangements. Yes. The ebook described them as geometric energy maps, which I thought was such a cool visual. So, how do they actually work? It's all about intention and synergy. You choose crystals that resonate with what you want to manifest and arrange them in specific patterns to amplify their combined energy. Wow. It's like creating a crystal circuit board for your desires. Okay, that's a tech metaphor I can get behind. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if I wanted to attract more abundance, I could create a grid with citrine, which is associated with prosperity, mm -hmm. and maybe arrange it in a pattern that represents growth like a spiral. Exactly. The ebook mentions the seed of life pattern, which represents creation and abundance. It's like giving your intention a geometric boost. Love it. Okay, so we've covered cleansing, connecting with angels, feng shui crystal grids, what else does this crystal toolbox have in store for us? Well, there's a lot more. The ebook even delves into using crystals for gardening and working with animals, which I thought was fascinating. Right. We can dive into those another time. But for now, I think it's time we explore the part of the ebook that I know you've been waiting for divination. Yes. Let's do it. I've always been curious about things like crystal balls and pendulums, but I never knew where to start. Okay. Ready to get mystical? I'm picturing us with crystal balls channeling our inner fortune tellers. Well, maybe not quite crystal balls, but the ebook does dive into some fascinating divination practices, specifically scrying and pendulum dousing. It's all about tapping into that inner wisdom we all have. I like it. So scrying, that's one with the shiny objects, right? Exactly. The ebook explains that you can use all sorts of things for scrying crystals, mirrors, even bowls of water, but it's the act of gazing that really matters. It's like quieting the mind so you can start to see those intuitive flashes. Like those times you stare at clouds and suddenly see a dragon or a unicorn. <laughs> exactly. But instead of clouds, we're using crystals to focus our attention. And what's interesting is that the ebook says even those little imperfections in a crystal, the inclusions, can actually make it better for scrying. Really? I always thought a perfectly clear crystal would be ideal. You'd think so, but those little flecks and swirls can actually act like doorways for our minds to wander through. It's like how a good book draws you in with vivid details. Okay, so how do we actually do it? Do I need a special chant or something? No need for chanting, thankfully. The ebook suggests finding a peaceful spot dimming the lights, holding your chosen crystal, and just letting your gaze soften as you gaze into it. Pay attention to any images, symbols, or feelings that pop into your mind. And I'm guessing keeping a journal handy wouldn't hurt, right? Absolutely. Jotting down those impressions can help you decipher any recurring patterns or messages. Now, pendulum dousing is a little different. Imagine holding a necklace with a crystal at the end and asking it yes or no questions. Like a magic eight ball on a chain. Kind of. But instead of pre-written answers, it's your intuition guiding the pendulum swing. The ebook says that even the slightest movements of our hand, those subconscious reactions, can influence the pendulum. So it's not like the crystal's magically telling me the winning lottery numbers. Probably not, but it can help you tap into your own inner guidance system. The ebook suggests choosing a crystal that aligns with your question. Like if you're seeking answers about love, maybe try a rose quartz pendulum. Okay, that makes sense. It's like choosing the right tool for the job. Mm. Speaking of tools, the ebook also mentioned something about crystal aroma therapy. Yes. It's about combining the power of crystals with the therapeutic benefits of essential oils. They can work together to enhance your well being on multiple levels. That sounds amazing. I use essential oils sometimes to relax or for a mood boost, but I never thought about combining them with crystals. It's a wonderful way to enhance your experience. You can try placing a few drops of essential oil onto a crystal, letting the scent infuse the stone. Lavender is great with amethyst for relaxation, or try rose essential oil with rose quartz for attracting love and compassion. Ooh, I'm adding that to my self-care list. So we've explored a ton of crystal wisdom in this deep dive. 
from decoding crystal jargon to cleansing techniques, connecting with angels, harmonizing our homes with feng shui, and even tapping into our intuition with scrying and pendulum dowsing, it's been quite the journey. It really has. And the best part is, this is just the beginning. Exactly. This deep dive into the Basic Crystal Users course has given us a solid foundation, but there's a whole universe of crystal knowledge out there waiting to be discovered. And the beauty of it is you don't need to be an expert. Trust your intuition experiment with different practices, and most importantly, have fun exploring the magic of crystals. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thanks for joining us on this crystal clear deep dive.